With me this morning from NR Private Market here in the studio, I'm joined by Rich Lloyd. Rich, good morning. Good, good to morning. see you. Hello, Andrew. We spoke when you uh, when you took over as chief executive last April, I believe. Yeah. How, how have you found it? Uh, it's gone quickly. Um, yes, yeah, so nine months in, so the end of the calendar year. Mm. Um, I don't think it's been the most favourable calendar year for raising money for exploration projects and, and smaller companies, but um, we found out, yeah, we've got a lot of traction, we've got a lot of users and visitors to the site now, and you know, every day we're getting new people doing all their sort mm. of KYC and AML, which they need to do to be signed up as sophisticated investors, and we're, we're growing that, we're keeping that balance between the size of, size of deals we've done and, and the number of investors. Well look, just remind us, for those perhaps not too familiar with the platform itself, what is it, how does it work? Yeah, so you sign up as a, you, you self-certify as a sophisticated or a high net worth investor, we're not doing the small um, restricted retail, i.e. the £500 here, £500 there. Mm. I know some have used people like Crowdcube, etc. and there's a place for that as well. Um, and there's a place for what we're doing. But we are targeting sort of bigger ticket retail and high net worths and family office type investors that also probably want to keep themselves a little bit more discreet. And we found it actually been quite welcomed by the, the broken community. Um, some see it as a threat initially, but now they see it as a complementary way of mm. raising funds and you know at the end of the day it's, it's going to be the future at some point look at airbnb and uber they've done it in their sectors so so why not raise money in, in the mining in the mining sector this way as well and you've done four deals so far yep. just go, give us a quick run through of what those have been yes that was kinkora was our first deal in mongolia a cup of gold porphyry um so sam springs out there drilling away um they you know copper copper porphyry exploration is mm. tough they're big targets um, so that continues. Uh, Aftermath Silver in Chile, that's gone very, very well. And the share price has, has done well on that one. And we have a small Vendetta, which is a polymetallic project near Cannington in uh, Queensland. So Cannington's one of the world's you know, largest lead zinc with a bit of silver mine, owned by South32. And the latest one is Cobra, which was a relisting on the main board in, in London. And uh, a very interesting deal for us to do especially when you've got the whole relisting and, and, and the FCA side and all the rest of it. Well, interestingly enough, we will be speaking in a moment to Craig Moulton from Cobra on Skype. But just in your view, what did you like about the company and the team? Yeah, we always said we were going to do earlier stage exploration projects as well. Um, those are harder to analyse. There is a reason we've only done four deals this, this, this so far. Um, but it, Craig and the team's understanding of linking the the geochemistry and the signatures they're getting underneath what's called a calcrete cover in South Australia, they've been able to advance their thinking and re-analyze previously known data in the Wudina um, project to uh, advance that to drilling stage, etc. And that's what that attracted us. So we, you know, we do vet, or whilst we're not recommending any stock, mm. uh, we do vet the ones we're seeing, and we obviously see a lot of early stage. Yes, please, you know, I'd love to raise some money on your platform. But you know, not all these projects are, are going to meet the grade that we feel is appropriate for the platform at this stage, and you know the investors want to. That's the sort of deals that the investors want to see. Well, Rich, don't go too far. We've got Craig on Skype with us now. Yeah, Craig, it's thunder. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Craig. Tell us, tell, tell me a little bit more about why you chose to work here with in our private market. So, look, when we saw the offering from in our private market, it really appealed to me personally. I think. Um, one of the key things that I like coming from a technical background is the due diligence that the private market perform um, before they select projects that actually get presented. Now, I think um, for investors, that gives them a lot of confidence that the projects that they're going to be looking at um, have very strong technical merit and are being managed by you know, competent people. Can you see companies such as yourselves turning more towards platforms such as in our private market in, in the future? Look, I think it's a really interesting question. Um, it's I think it's quite easy to see how this platform makes it very easy for investors to participate in placements like the one Cobra has just completed. And I think that could be very attractive to them. So it's certainly something that we'll look to include in our funding mix going forward. And yes, I, I think it will become a mainstream part of um, stockbroking. And tell me a little bit more, Craig, about Cobra Resources itself. What, what are you guys about? So Cobra Resources is a main listed company. We're uh, largely an exploration and mining company. We have projects in South Australia. 
Um, our flagship project is called Woodna, which is on the Eyre Peninsula in South Australia, which is a fantastic jurisdiction to work in. Um, and we currently have a 211,000 ounce gold resource. And we're in the process of, or we will be in the process this year of exploring that. Um, and that will start with a series of geochem sampling um, to de-risk our targets and, and look at increasing our gold reserves. And the idea here be behind raising some cash with uh, in our private market, was that to push ahead with the exploration work here? Absolutely. As per the prospectus that we released, um, it's to fund initial three-stage geochem sampling program. And um, that, as I say, that involves uh, initial calibration and then focusing on some of our greenfield exploration targets and, and also some of our brownfield exploration mm -hmm. targets, all with the, the aim of increasing our gold resources. Just for those not too familiar, Craig, with, uh, with COBRA, where does, where does the Lady Alice project fit into the, fit into the mix here? Okay, so we announced the Lady Alice acquisition um, in March last year. Uh, at that point, Cobra was a listed cash shell, and we've just completed that reverse takeover, and we commenced trading again on the 16th of January. So the, the acquisition really um, enabled us to acquire the rights to the Wooden Gold Project, which, as I said earlier, is our flag flagship project. Um, but it also brought with it um, the Prince Alfred project, which is a historic gold mine. So that deal has been key to uh, establishing Cobra as an exploration and mining company. Just tell me a little bit more about what in particular you liked about these projects. So I'm, I'm a geologist, that's my background, although I also have a master's in mineral, mineral economics. Um, and the two things that really struck me about the Wooden Gold Project in particular um, was certainly the scale and the grade. Now, um, this has the potential for being a, a large scale gold project. Um, and, you know, when you look at some of the grades, the discovery grades are between five and 10 grams per tonne. Even though the average grade of the resource at the moment is about one and a half grams, you know, there's certainly potential for some large scale gold mineralization uh, if we're successful in the exploration process. And in your, in your discussions here with UK investors, have you seen a bit of interest in what you're up to? Absolutely. You know, I've been to the UK several times as part of the fundraising process and we'll continue to do visits there to talk to our shareholders and our brokers. And um, yeah, look, I think everybody that we've spoken to can see the potential of this project and we've had a very positive response from the people we've spoken to. Very good. Craig, thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, Craig Moulton there from Cobray and Rich Lloyd, still with me in the studio. Craig, he clearly believes platforms such as yours are the future. You'd tend to agree? Well, I hope imagine. so. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, th I think it is. And we mentioned, uh, we mentioned Airbnb earlier, let's, for example, when you're coming to looking at, at, at picking up a, a villa somewhere. Um, there's no reason why raising money shouldn't be done on these sort of platforms. It, it seems very, it's a lot simpler uh, with sort of the right signature, the documentation afterwards, et cetera, et cetera. We've refined the signing up process, so that's a lot smoother. Yeah, we learn lessons. We've been at it, you know, a while now, um, mm. and, the, and the regulatory side of things continues to be something you constantly have to be aware of. Um, you know, there are developments where new companies are going to drop, uh, drop into this investor lounge where they just want to raise awareness, mm. and that's been a request from the companies. I don't necessarily want to raise money at the moment, but I like what you're doing. I like your reach. You do these interviews with Proactive as well. I want to be a part of that. And maybe sometime down the line I might raise some money, but at least people are going to have a much more awareness of who I am. Because there's a lot of noise there, and as we're selective in the deals we have, uh, we want to pop these companies we're keen on to above that noise, let's say. Can you see yourselves continuing to work predominantly with public companies? No, I can see us doing a lot more private deals. Um, two sides of that, I don't think the private companies get enough exposure, and our investors the reporting back we've had from them is we like to see more private deals because we never get to see those. Mm. Those are always done, um, you know, perhaps with friend, you know, friends and family to start with and then the broker will go to their usual investors, which is the model, which is fine. Um, but some of our investors, and certainly some of the family offices as well, so we'd like to get involved in these earlier, maybe take a bigger stake um, and then see these and help these people grow. And there's a lot of 
there's a lot of knowledge out there as well. And we've, we've enjoyed working with, we've got a couple of private companies now, um, two of whom are looking at the investor lounge, as we call it. Um, and those will be coming to market pretty soon. One is called Green Ore, which is a domestic deal, which I've always said I wanted to do. Um, it'll be a small raise, but it's a Scottish gold project. Um, so they'll be coming. They'll be coming into the investor lounge soon, um, and with a view to you know raising some money as well. And you mentioned a little bit earlier about the the difficulties in 2019 around raising cash. Four deals done in nine months. Is that a reflection on the state of the market? To some extent, um, I'd like to have done more. I'd like to have done nine deals. Yeah, one a month. Um, I hope we get to that point. Um, we have a bandwidth within the team to analyse the deals. Uh, there was a little bit of the state of the market, so you have to keep that balancing with the investors, not only signing up and onboarding, but willing to deploy capital. And I think, as, as we saw during last year, there across whatever fundraising mechanism you're using, there wasn't um, the full desire to do that. Um, we're seeing a little bit of a change. Obviously, the gold price helps. Mm. Um, and you know investors are starting to deploy more capital. So we wanted to be ready to not exploit that, but ready to be able to service that desire. And we have that, the infrastructure is all built and ready to go now, and we've proven it with four deals, and we hope to do more. So you're confident on the year ahead, are you? I'm very confident in the year ahead. I've been in, in mining and gold pretty much all my life, so I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm a bull on the mining market. Um, I think there's some brilliant projects out there. Uh, you just need to be able to work out which ones are, are the real goers. Uh, actually, and especially in, a, in, a, in an elevated metals price environment, you know, there are some deals out there that perhaps aren't as good, but they look a little bit better in the terms of the IRRs when there's an elevated, elevated price, whatever the base commodity is. And you've got to be able to analyse the, uh, the, the good projects between the ones that are just there because the, the prices increase slightly. Rich, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew.